Houston Station on two. Okay, so I hit pause. Um, we have one of our cameras that was specially modified and flown up uh, with us for this expedition where the infrared blocking filter has been removed. So this camera is sensitive to the near infrared region of the spectrum. And here you see the infrared camera on top and mounted uh, underneath it is a standard camera that's uh, unmodified. And we can take pictures now simultaneously of the same area. So here's uh, images cycling back and forth between visible and infrared. And, and you can see the infrared part of the spectrum shows up in different shades of, of red, and, uh, and then the rest of the colors are pushed off into the, the uh, green and the blue channels on the camera. And one of the aspects of infrared imagery is that it shows up agriculture in a, in a very interesting way, in, a, in more of a technical way, and, and it allows you to investigate more into the health of the crops and what's going on. Uh, this is in the Salton Sea area in, uh, in uh, California, and you can see a little uh, evaporative pond region in the, sort of the, the center section. Uh, here's how it looks in the infrared. So again, wherever there's plants, you see bright red. So the, the Earth observation scientists will be able to take these kinds of images and compare directly the, the visible with the infrared. Where human beings make their cities, it's primarily gray in the infrared. You can see there's agriculture around these city regions. This is visible. This is infrared. Now this is in the Olivard Desert region in uh, eastern Oregon. The Steens Mountains have a little skip of snow on them. You can see that to the, to the left, running north and south. And in the Olivard Desert region, in the visible, it just looks like a bunch of desert brown. Well, one of the neat things about infrared is that water reflects infrared differently. So here's the same all of our desert region in infrared. And notice that one section that just looked like dry brown desert actually is freestanding water. We even have some experiments on space station where we're imaging croplands in the United States, and it's typically uh, uh, put on hold during the winter because uh, we don't raise many crops during the winter. But what I'm finding is that you take infrared imagery of snow-covered scenes, particularly with ice-covered uh, lakes, and you can see some interesting detail that starts to show up. This is in a visible, and here, here is the infrared. Oh, this is Los Angeles in the visible, and you can see it's primarily gray. Lots of cement and concrete down there. And here it is in the infrared. And notice the parks and the reserves show up quite well in the infrared. You can see where there's lots of greenness in the Los Angeles region when you look at it in the infrared. This is, is uh, San Diego. And you can see North Island. And you can see the border between San Diego and Mexico. And here it is in the infrared. Uh, borders visible, the uh, cities are visible, but all the, the greeneries within the city show up quite clearly in the infrared. So we're gonna take a peek at some, oh, at some various cities. Now this, this is fascinating. This is one of the jungles in the Amazon region. If you take a visible, picture of this area. It looks kind of a, a misty, foggy blue just because of the water vapor and the haze and the clouds and the infrared tends to cut through that and you can see the detail and the structure of the jungle canopies when you look at this in the infrared. Now, this is a region in Africa, a jungle region, and you can see in the, this visible picture where the jungles have been cleared for agricultural purposes. This is the uh, Ganges River Delta. There's a reserve there, and this is lush mangrove jungle, and you can see again, it's bright red, uh, lots of greenery down there. But look on the left-hand edge. You can see that there's uh, uh, some sections there that aren't quite as red.
and we'll find out why. This is another region in the Ganges River Delta in India, and you can see where the reserves are, uh, where, uh, where they have not done agriculture, and you can see where the agriculture is, and you can see in between the, there, there are rows of mangroves. And this, this is a, a, one of my favorites. This is an oblique view of Guatemala showing the jungle region with volcanoes popping up out of the area. And this is along, somewhere along the western coast of South America uh, uh, in, in Chile. There's some regions where the mountains come right up to the edge of the ocean, and there's not a lot of plant material there. As you can see, the mountains are basically gray, but there's a little river delta, and lots of vegetation on this river delta shows up quite well in the infrared. This is in Japan. I haven't quite identified it. I'm not sure which volcanoes these are in Japan, but you can see the cities around the volcano regions with a snow-capped mountain there. You can see where the, the plants are and where the cities are. And this is Tokyo. And again, typifies large urban areas where you have vast expanses of a city, and it's primarily gray. And then you can see where the, where the plants are thriving. And this is in the Bahamas. Uh, in the Caribbean area, uh, very beautiful from orbit. You see the turquoise water with a little island circling it. There's no other place on the planet that looks quite like this. But let's see what this looks like in the infrared. Almost looks like Van Gogh and Matisse got together to make a painting and mix their palettes. Not only are they beautiful from an artistic point of view, but I'm hoping the Earth scientists will find uh, information here that, that they will uh, uh, find uh, interesting. And uh, the camera we have has the capability of making high definition movies, and so I took the liberty to make uh, an infrared movie, and this is a path going over the Andes Mountains into Argentina. And that concludes uh, this downlink. This one was about the color infrared uh, digital camera that we now have on Space Station that replaces our lost capability of color infrared film since we no longer fly film the Space Station. And now we as crew can use this camera to make both still images and, uh, and movies of targets that will be of interest to not only Earth scientists but also just uh, a general observation as well. That was fantastic, Don. Thanks a lot for that.